And I, to me, I think all this talk about, you know, the, the skepticism that people have nationally about Trey Lance, I think it all disappears if he does, you know, what we've seen in practice in a game. And that's just my my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these people are dug in on their position. But I just think that they're, they're either grading him on those games from, from last year or the year before, or they're just looking at the timeline and going, by now he should have gotten it. And if he hasn't gotten it by now, he's no good. But they're not watching what we're watching at practice. That's for sure. I, no, I'm they, so excited to see that as well because both of you have gotten to see it this offseason. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I haven't seen him play in five quarters. So for sure, I, I felt like that would be a little bit of a cop out answer because obviously that's a player we are all intrigued to see because of what a limited sample size we have. But it sounds like, I, and I, I I love the way you described it, Krug, because I think a lot of people are lost in this quarterback competition and the competitiveness between. I want to prop up this guy, so I need to denigrate that guy and all of that. And that I that's part of fandom. Okay, I understand why people do that. But I think when you're talking about just as a process of Trey Lance's development, and you just look at his development individually, don't compare it to anybody else, and you look at him for growth as an individual, it sounds like everything has been positive this offseason towards that, right? He's been more consistent in practice, which was – he was always up and down peaks and valleys. That's how it seemed to be described to us before in practice, right? It sounds like these new mechanics have stuck through the entire training camp, which we weren't sure if that would actually stick once he actually started playing in with more reps. And then the last thing that I think has been consistent that we're hearing is that he's been consistently decisive in how he's been playing. He's, everybody has said he's cut it loose. He's played quick. He's played fast. He's played with urgency. Those are all really positive steps for him as an individual in terms of his development. And I think when you look at it like that, absolutely, it sounds like he's made positive strides, and I can't wait to find out if he has this Sunday. Yeah, what do you, I mean, what I, do you think, Jesse? Because you, you did come out, and you yeah. did put your eyes on it, and you were out here for at least, what, four or five practices? So you got a pretty good, healthy yeah, dose of it. Yeah, I was I was out there for five. I mean, I don't think there was like huge separation between the quarterbacks, right? Like I, I think to me, Lance probably was slightly the best. I think he was clearly better than Sam. I think between he and Brock, it was close. And okay. and I think Trey was slightly better just because two of the days I said he was the best quarterback and only one of the days I gave to Brock. But he's a lot more decisive than Sam Darnold is. But to me, like this isn't going to, nothing is going to change as far as the talk. The people that are going to talk are going to talk because here's what's happened, Larry. Let's follow this all the way through. First, you know, when, when Trey's a rookie and he beats the Texans, the excuse was it's just the Texans. Okay. Right, right. We go all off season. That, that was a it. must win game, by the way. Right. Must remember. win game, but it's just the Texans, right? It doesn't matter that they did what they did to Herbert the week before or any of that stuff. It was just the Texans. Then you have the game in Chicago where things don't go so great. He breaks his leg. We don't see him for a year. He comes back. You've got the videos coming out of his mechanics. And then everybody's like, well, there's no way that when the bullets start flying that that's going to stick. Okay. So then we see in practice that it does stick. And so the goalpost gets moved again. Well, let's see what happens when pads come on. Okay. Pads come on. He plays well. Yeah, but it's not the first team. Okay, so then he goes against the first team a couple times. It looks good. Okay, well, let's see it in an actual game. All right, so then we'll see it in a preseason game, and then that won't be good enough. And then he can do it in the regular season and so far. It's just never going to be good enough. Like, people have their opinion of what they think it is. They want to be right, so they're going to continue to move the goalposts. And I think that goes for national media as well. So I personally don't think there's anything that Trey can do this Sunday to go out and, and prove to these people that, he should be on this roster, that he's much better than Sam. I mean, not only has basically every 49er writer come out and said, yeah, he's been better than Sam Darnold, even the ones that are perceived not to be fans of Trey Lance. But now you've got the Raiders guys coming out and saying it. Today, you just had a, a, a Raider beat writer come out. He, he was on Croc show, talked up Trey Lance, was like, listen, I didn't believe in this kid, but after seeing him today, I think there might be something special there. I didn't expect to see that. The ball flies off his hands. His mechanics have completely changed. 
He surprised the hell out of me today. And when you watch Sam Darnold play, his processing's slow. Okay. Well, I mean, we kind of knew this about Sam. Sam's not doing anything different than what we thought other than not turning the ball over, but he's not turning the ball over because he's checking it down every single time he throws the ball. I don't know, man. It's crazy. I I don't, I don't want to interject because I actually agree with a lot of what you said, but I will say in defense of the national media, I think some of the anti-Trey stuff when they prop up Sam Darnold has not been about, well, I think Sam Darnold's a better football player than Trey Lance, but I'm just reading the tea leaves of the business decisions the organization makes, right? And when a team calls up Sam Darnold 30 minutes into the legal tampering period, right, a guy who started last year and gives him a job that we perceive is going to be the third quarterback job, then there are optics to the situation that made a lot of people look at it and say he's going to be the backup. And I agree with you. I think a lot of people are going to move the goalposts with Trey Lance. I think a similar thing is going to happen to Brock Purdy as well, by the way. If he plays really, really well once again next year, the goalposts will once again be moved. But I think more importantly than that, while the goalposts will be moved and a public perception will be what the public perception is, we'll be able to see it, right? And we'll be able to see that individual improvement. And that's what I'm really excited to see, right? Because we're talking about a player that's gone through quite a bit that I don't think people have never actually ever been fair to on what he has gone through mentally over the last three years between the injuries, having to be the face of the franchise for this team with this expectations and all of that. It's a lot of, it's a heavy toll on someone that shares age with me. So I understand I mean, 50% of that, I mean, actually 10% of that type of pressure, I would wilt under it. So I understand the kind of toll that it takes on him. But seeing that improvement and seeing him go through that and still make those strides, I think will be a massive positive. And I I don't think it necessarily really matters what the public perception is, because really all Trey Lance needs is one team to believe in him, whether it's somebody else or whether it's the 49ers, he just needs one team to believe in him. And it doesn't matter what the public says, right? Let me ask you this. <clears throat> There's something about video that's very, very powerful. Mm-hmm. We know that domestic violence is terrible, but when we saw Ray Rice drop his girlfriend and we saw the video, his career was over. Right. right? The video was really strong. We talk about Brock Purdy being the starting quarterback, <clears throat> and he's earned it based on what he did last year. But if Trey Lance play and if Mooch is right and Purdy doesn't play at all in the preseason, and if I'm right that Trey Lance is going to play in the preseason the way he's played in practice, let's just say he can eradicate some of the misses, the short misses, because that's really what he's having. He's The only thing he's really looking bad at is an occasional short miss. He he's he I think he sees it. I think he's processing what he sees. I think the ball's coming out on time and it's coming out on a on a line. I mean, he looks at times Trey looks free not good, not very good. At times he looks freaking great. 